What's up guys, this is Dennis with 21 Grams. I thought it'd be fun to do a little commentary for today's video. Probably won't be very informational, but it'll definitely be a silly goose time. So I thought it'd be fun just to jump on here, say what's up, kind of let you guys know what I'm doing in this video. So you're gonna see right here, I trace my pattern onto the leather. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. I sped up a lot of this process just because it becomes kind of redundant. And you'll see that further in the video. So right here, I'm taking masking tape and just placing it on the back. That helps prevent stretching in the leather once you wet it down and you start doing the tooling process. I use this glass slicker. That helps just press the tape down so it gets a really good bond. Trim off all of the excess. I don't want this sticking to my hand, getting gunked up later. Right here, I'm just casing the leather with obviously water and a paintbrush. Some people use misters. Some people use their enemies' tears. Whatever you gotta do, wet down the leather. Put down some plastic wrap. That's gonna help prevent the moisture from the leather going into your tracing paper, which you'll see here shortly. When you tape on the plastic wrap, make sure to get the corner of the tape on the plastic and then pull it tight to the center. I'm taping down my pattern here, just so it doesn't slide around. I use a red Micron felt tip pen as my first kind of drawing. That way when I use the black ballpoint pen, I can see where I've already worked and I'm less likely to miss lines. Before I would use a black micron and a red pen, but that kind of defeated the purpose. So I switched that formula as we often do. It's, you know, it's okay. Change your mind, find different techniques. Now we're going into warp speed. I'm just transferring that pattern that I drew onto the leather. Remove that, I like to remove the patterns really gently so that I can either give them to my clients or save them. That swivel knife I get asked about more than any other tool that I use. It's, it's similar to a tattoo tube and uh, I just put a swivel knife blade in it. So I tattooed for a really long time, kind of muscle memory. They're really good for people that have carpal tunnel or people that just have hand injuries. They're real easy on the hands. It works for me, it may not work for everyone. People are used to their swivel knives and I think that's cool, but this works better for me. When I cut in my pattern, I'm cutting in about a third of the width of the leather. Here I'm starting all of the tooling. I like to go on the outside and work my way in. Again, it's sped up here because this takes a long time. This project took me probably three days start to finish. Plus, I personally like time lapse. I try to take my style of tattooing and apply it to leather tooling. I was never formally taught how to do anything regarding leather. Everything I've kind of just taught myself along the way. So the design of this wallet, which you probably saw from the beginning, is roses and a butterfly. A client reached out to me and gave me some reference photos 
He allowed me to draw the way that I draw to provide him the best product that I could. And a little advice, if you guys ever reach out to any kind of artist, seek out an artist that has a style that you like already and let them do their thing. You're gonna get the best product from that person if you let them kind of express themselves through their own artwork. That works best for me. If you, if you have an artist excited to do your project, they're gonna put a lot more heart into it, just naturally. This part right here, I'm using a really deep checker and that creates a stipple or whip shading effect that you would see in tattooing. I'm not sure who makes it. I'm not sure what model, there's no numbers on it, but it's a prized possession of mine because I haven't been able to find another one anywhere and I never wanna lose it. Right here, I'm just starting the painting process. I always like to put down a little bead of water before I put down any paint. That makes the paint a little bit more malleable and easy to move around your project. I use Angelus leather acrylic paint. This stuff is the best. I don't think there's anything that compares. When painting, I like to start with the lightest colors and work to the darkest colors. That seems to work best for me and easiest to blend that way. Put down a bead of water add the lighter color. I like to work light to dark. That seems to work best for me. So right now we're just getting in the light blues. The, the client wanted two blue roses and a purple butterfly. And he gave me the freedom to do what I wanted. So I used the color palette based off of what he suggested and really just went for it. So now I'm, now I'm adding the darker blue, which is going to make things start to kind of pop. You'll see things kind of all start to come together here. Again, in this process, I'm still using a lot of water. I blend out the, the paint using water, constantly dipping back and forth in my rinse cup. And uh, yeah, I just go for it. I think these leaves turned out pretty cool. I'm really happy with them. The key to get colors that really pop is putting dark and light colors right next to each other. Now I'm doing all of the black shading. That's what I do last. And that's what really brings everything together. I'm a big fan of using a lot of black. It makes the colors in your painting really come to life. This background portion of the main painting here, I just wanted to use a natural kind of tan color just to remind the client that it is a leather product, kind of gives that, that feeling of leather when everything else is painted. Now I'm just going around that border really meticulously because if you start painting inside of there, you just waste a day and a half of work. So that part is a little bit tense. Now it's a little less stressful. Just fill in the blanks. I don't show it on the video, but I always add two coats of black. This is acrylic finisher from Angelus. Game changer, I love this stuff. I also do two coats of this just to ensure 
that it's nice and protected. And then I always add leather balm after this phase. I add it multiple times throughout the project. We're cutting out the liner for the shell of the wallet. This is a snake skin embossed vegetable tan leather. I love this stuff because I can dye it any color that I want to. Add some glue, move it around. If you get too much, just add it to the piece that you're about to glue. And if you have too little, just add a little bit more. Using my baby uh, rolling pin, I put that weight on for a couple hours just so the glue dries really good and it's nice and bonded. Now I'm gonna cut out the inserts for my wallet here. This clicker press is a game changer. Thank you, Weaver, love you. A full review is gonna be coming for that really soon as well. This is where I'm gonna attach all of those pocket inserts in. Gonna cut off the excess right here. This little scratchy thing does a really good job so the glue sticks really well. And then I'm gonna mini rolling pin it again because that's always fun. Gonna just stitch in this first insert. I got the other three of them already stitched in, but I didn't want to show every part of that because it becomes pretty redundant and boring. That little mini rolling pin again, I love that thing. Now I'm stitching in a line down the center so there'll be two separate pockets for cards. This will be able to carry between eight to 10 single card or you can add cards to each pocket. Measuring out where I'm gonna put my snap, I wanna do that before I add this part of the pockets because I won't have access to that inside once it's glued down and everything's stitched together. Those pliers are incredible. Take off those corners. I get this first sanding in just to kind of flatten everything out. Put in my stitch lines. Now we're gonna get this all stitched up. You get to see a little glimpse of my new studio, which I'm gonna be doing a full, a full tour video. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe now, and you'll be able to see when that studio tour comes out. Make sure to sharpen your bevelers every single time that you use them. A sharp tool is a safe tool. Put a little bit of water on the edges and use this burnishing machine. I used the black tokenol for the first time. I absolutely love that stuff. Finish it up with the clear tokenol. The only thing about the black tokenol is if you're using colored thread, it can, it can stain it. I was able to get it off, but just be aware of that. And now I'm trying to get this folded enough so that I could put my top snap on it. Lining that up, measuring it out, punch a hole, snap. That's it guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share with a friend. Love ya.